Alright, another group, another Friday, another group ride. Uh, right, so it's Starbucks group ride this time. Good laugh. Uh, we hit it for a bit about maybe half an hour altogether. Pretty cruisy ride for like first 10, 15 minutes. Then we just swap turns. Pretty cash, nothing too crazy. And then everyone just gradually edges it up, but not, not too mental. And then we turn left off Canal Road, and then it's full gas to the line. So you can see here I'm on the front just holding like 400 more or less, trying to get just, you know, average that 48, 50k an hour. That's that's pretty much what I'm trying to get keep it around. And I was in this TT position. I was like, this is actually pretty easy. Like, I just felt like, you know what I mean? When you just feel good and you just feel like you can just hold numbs. And today I definitely felt like that. It's just, just sort of like doing the motions and just like on the front. I was like, yeah, we'll just clip it up a gear, get up to 51k an hour. And like on these roads, again, I'd say like in the UK, this is probably equivalent to like 46Ks an hour. Like uh, I really would say it's that much difference in the speeds um, because I do similar turns on this and there's no way to get to like 52 on the UK roads. Uh, so it's incredible what difference the roads makes. Anyway, for some reason, there was only like four of us off the front. Everyone else was behind. So then it basically meant I had to do another turn quickly. You can see I'm off the back chasing. And basically what happened in this uh, particular group ride was there was a lot of gaps. I mean, a lot of gaps. Like I was literally having to close gaps left, right, and center just because people just seemed to like get into the line and realize that the pace would then suddenly surge, and then they'd be like, "Oh, I, I, I'm just going to leave the gap." It's like, "Well, no, go to the front and just don't pull like a 10 second turn and then get out of the way instead of just leaving huge gaps." Anyway, this bloke was a good bloke. He did some solid turns, and we're just coming up towards the end of Canal Road before we turn left and where we absolutely launch it. If you've seen the other videos. Uh, I think I did one other video on this. Um, and it was good. Uh, we basically end up motor pacing this truck and it was a bit ridiculous, but this time it was good It was just more sort of a balls of wars for that bit and it was nice uh, So you can see this guy pulls up Because uh, he's like done his turn uh, and I think it was a red light above so I didn't really Didn't really go very fast down here. So just cruising into it. Everyone gets a bit of a breather so we can absolutely hit it uh, But it's good training this really enjoy it like I was I didn't get much sleep last night But I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go out I'm just gonna smash myself for like this this period uh, and just see how my legs feel. My legs felt good, so I was like, ah, oh, feeling good for the race on the weekend. It's just like one of those things you just go through the motions, you just do it, like you don't even think about it. And riding with a group is like this is good because you don't really need the motivation. The motivation is there to smash yourself. Like otherwise, it would have been hard for me to really do this this sort of things. And also, it's race specific. Like obviously, my race on the weekend is like an uphill time trial in a group. Well, an uphill climb in a group. So not exactly like this but on the flat it's good it's good practice um it's better than almost it's almost better than riding at threshold because you get used to those um sort of peaks after you get uh get back like as in so you do your turn then you recover then you have like a little sprint on and that's really race specific and it is something that people find often very hard um, and new people i always if they ever ask me about like group group dynamics it's always just like the hardest thing is getting back on the group uh, on the back of the group uh after you've done your turn but anyway, you can see here, we've, we've chucked it up to 47k an hour. We've got Katusha Man ahead of us on the giant TCR. Uh, Team Giant Alperson edition, I believe. Pretty nice paint job. Everyone has pretty nice bikes, uh, bling bikes around these parts. Uh, most people who ride, and it's pretty good. As you can see here, we're just swapping some turns, pretty cash. No one's going absolutely mental. Some people sort of like, like surging a lot on the front. I sort of like doing it on this part, just because it's sort of like you want to drop as many people as possible. Uh, but if you get stuck behind the surge, which uh, you guessed it, I did. Uh, a couple of times, it, it can be very annoying. Um, so anyway, this guy chucks out his elbows, so I'm like, all right. I always sort of like go slightly away from that guy just to, to make people work a little bit harder because they suddenly have to surge onto the other side of the road. Obviously, I check there's no cars. Anyway, back into the TT position. I'm really liking the TT position. Um, obviously, in the UK, you can't do it in races, really, unless you're like decent. Like if you're on my level, like Cat 3, Cat 4, uh, maybe you can Cat 2, 3, 4 races, like they just don't allow it. Um, but I'm, I'm liking it here. Anyway, now I'm just starting to do slightly shorter turns, a bit more intensity because I know to get on the back of this, it can be very difficult and quite strenuous, so I really don't want to do super long turns. Anyway, you see here, gaps opening already. This guy's on his Pinarello with his Campagnola Bora Ultra 50 wheels. is not helping me close any gaps. Anyway, I go straight to the back of the line, um, and you can see what I've done is I basically sprinted a little bit before, so I'm now almost at that speed. So I only had to jump up maybe 3K an hour from 47 to 50. Um, well, otherwise, I would have had to gone from 40 to 50, which is like so hard, uh, unless you're a big sprinter. You see, although these guys now are going to get the tail off the bat, there's no way they're going to be jumping. They were going like 40, we we're going like 50. There's no way they're going to get on there. This guy's like, nah, cheerio, man. I'm not. I can't hold this pace. So I'm not. All right, I'm going around you. Um, and this is sort of a, this is what sort of cooked me quite a lot because you'll suddenly have to do a huge effort, like almost you're doing your turn on the front to get across this gap, and then you're trying to get your heart rate down and recover, and then you do a turn in like 
a minute or something. So it's suddenly like you've done, done double the amount of turns that everyone else has, and everyone else is feeling fresh, and the people behind you are sitting on just chilled out. But that's just like part of part of life. I mean, like, you don't really know when people are gonna drop. Like obviously you can pick your wheels well, but like in this, it's like a pace line, so you're just swapping turns. So it's hard to it's hard to really like muscle way in and be like I want your wheel or whatever like obviously in a race it's a different situation but anyway you got to deal with the cars you got to deal with anyway this guy then comes to the front the other guy did a solid turn this guy launches up a couple k's an hour uh, and then basically pulls off almost straight away there you go so he just does short turns you see here again I don't really launch it that much I know yeah we go up to like 500 but I'm not absolutely drilling it on the front uh, when I first get onto it which I could do I could just launch it up to like 600 watts and really annoy people but anyway, you can see here Still holding decent power. I'm doing like slightly long turns than everyone else. Um, I think I flick over here um, just because I felt strong and I wanted to buy myself. But anyway, I could suddenly see that I would drop down to 43. So just watch the speed, 43, and now I'm getting back up towards the back and then use 47, and I'm finally back at 49k an hour. So you can see there's like 6k an hour difference and 7k an hour difference. I'm still barely on the back now. And like that is that difference you have to bridge. So you can either bridge it slowly, which is probably burns more energy, but it's more sustainable normally than just doing a big sprint unless you've got a, unless you've got a solid sprint on you, you can do a thousand watt sprints it's not even tiring like it's better to slightly bridge it slowly um, and also try and get really close to the line because then you get a good draft if you're miles away from the line you're getting no draft like this guy on the left is literally getting zero draft at a fast but if he was right next to us and you'll watch like good riders will do it and pros will do it they'll go so close to each other so you get a sort of half draft off them and it helps so much anyway again you can see i'm just just chilling at the back um like it's weird isn't it because when you're when you're riding like this you sort of like you remember the accelerations, but you don't remember all the times that you're freewheeling. And when you look at the power now, you're like, ah, oh, it's so easy on the wheel. But the thing you don't remember is that, like, you're trying to recover. And it's like every time you have to go, like, above 300, 330 for me, it's like above threshold. And that's really when I'm just like, eh, it hurts. So now you see this guy picks it up and suddenly it's an acceleration. So you're then doing 450, 500 watts on the wheel. Then I come around um, and I really do try and just chuck it up and do my turn around 4, 480 to 500 watts. Like, I don't look at my power meter that much. Like, I sort of know what I want to do. I just look at it more to, like, confirm that I'm doing the watts. But, like, most of this is, like, um, I was trying to get explained to some other people. It's, like, you do it on feel, really. You don't look at the speed. You just know what, like, effort you need to do in order to, like, roll turns effectively. On this, obviously, it's slightly different because you're not trying to, you're not trying to time trial together. It's more like you're just trying to, like, drop everyone else. But you can see here, here we go. These, I just did my turn, and these people decide that they're going to absolutely hit it on the front, I believe. Oh, no, 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 this is it. So, again, that guy is way too far apart. I, I know I do that as well. Like, when I do my turn, I'm too far apart. But I think it's really good to concentrate and try and get real close. So, these guys ahead of me are all solid, solid riders. I think they said they're going to do the race on Toys of Tap, so that'll be good. I believe they're all heavier than me, so should should get <laughs> should do better than them, because I'm, I'm pretty similar on the flats. And you can see here, I'm doing a decent turn and flick over pretty pretty quickly. But again here, I'm, I'm, I'm like close, but not really. But this is when they just decide to absolutely launch at that bloke on the front. Cause, and then I have to sprint on and I get on the back of this Katusha man wheels. And uh, it was good. But you watch the guy ahead of him. The, so Katusha man loses the wheel here, which is bad. So then I'm like, but that's still fine because I can still hop that gap. And then I, I let this guy go in front, which was sort of dumb, but maybe not too bad. But you can see Katusha man's left the wheel go. And so is the other guy ahead. And now there's just like two of them up the road. So Trek man has also left it. And that was so annoying because it was literally my turn. I'd done my turn, then they attacked straight away. And that's the thing, on your turn, you really never want to do a turn. And this is quite an important thing. You never want to do a turn where if someone attacks, you can't respond. Because that is when what happened to me there. So they, they did a turn and an attack. But you can see I'm, I'm still pushing decent watts. Like I'm not completely cooked. There was just bad positioning really as well. Like I went straight to the back. I should have gone in front of Katusha Man and gone that guy's wheel. And then I would have only had to go around one person, which I probably could have done. But you can see I'm on the front now and I'm actually bringing them back. But the thing I don't want to do is I don't want to like absolutely cook myself, bring them back and then have an attack. So I, I'd, I'd rather just, you know, try and bring them back a little bit um, and then, you know, hop that gap if I can. Uh, but anyway, this guy was doing some good turns, actually. He was a good bloke. Uh, he looks rather odd on the bike, but he was, he's a solid bloke. So anyway, he's like, averaging 45. I think I come to the front and try and whip it up a little bit. Yeah, you can see getting up to 46, maybe a little bit higher because I'm really trying to pull this bike guy back, these people back. Because I know if I'm doing like 400 watts on the front, 430 watts on the front, they're, not, they're like they're not really going to be getting back. Um, they're not going to be pulling ahead. So you can see we're definitely getting closer. And then as soon as those arms get in the TT position, you just know stuff. You know, shit is real. Um, and then again, I'm waiting for this guy to come through uh, and sprint around. I think my my power meter dropped out then because it seems a bit odd. But then Katusha Man decides to, I don't know where he came from, but he then attacked round. Um, and the bit of sprint is like this tree on the left. Uh, and I have an absolute shocking sprint. So I try and put my hands in the drops now and have a little sprint. Oh, we don't even hit 700 watts. We don't even hit 700 watts. You can see my sprint was 
absolutely dead. I was cooked on that. Uh, and I believe Blue Man got the win as, as he did last last week, actually, as a gold TCR. Uh, but there you go. Cheers for watching. I've got a bit of motor pacing after this. Uh, good laugh. We hit like 60Ks an hour, which is always good. Uh, but anyway, cheers for watching. Um, and my race is on Sunday, and I'll, make, I'll be making a good video on that. I'm sacrificing 200 grams or whatever the GoPro is uh, to make a video for you. So if I don't win by like a couple seconds, we all know that the viewers will be getting the blame it's for the GoPro. Uh, but anyway, here's a bit of motor pacing, 54Ks an hour behind this bloke. Anyway, good laugh. And tomorrow I'll probably just have a vid uh, about me preparing for the race. So anyway, cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.